Hey, what's going on? My name is Kevin Deers. Welcome to Everflowing Stream. Thanks for checking out another one of my video interviews. If you could, please subscribe, comment, uh, like, share it, all that good stuff. I'm just kind of getting started here and doing some video editing. Um, I come from the land of uh, podcasting and, and radio, so audio is more of my expertise, but I'm just now learning how to uh, get myself up to speed with video editing and whatnot. So I appreciate anything uh, that you have for me as far as feedback. I really do appreciate it. Without any further ado, I'm going to jump into my interview with uh, a band known as Hooded Menace. Now, I'm actually cha cha uh, talking with Harry Kwakanen, the vocalist of this band. They're a Finnish death doom band that's putting out an album called The Tritonous Bell. Highly anticipated record coming out August 27th on Season of Mist. So without any further ado, here's my interview with Harry Kwakanen on Everflowing Stream. And I'm talking right now with Har okay, let me get this. Hari Kukakan. Kukanan. Kukanan. Uh, pretty close. Kuokkanen. Let me try. Kuokkanen. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Awesome. Uh he's the vocalist of the Finnish Death Doom band Hooded Menace, uh from Finland, of course. And they have a new album called The uh, Tritonous Bell coming out August 27th on Season of Mist. How are you doing today, man? I'm feeling, yeah, we're doing pretty good right now. It's it's finally getting um, not colder, but not so hot in Finland. It, it has been like almost unbearable hot hotness over here. So now it's it's finally like uh, the summer weather I enjoy. <laughs> yeah. So. so it's more acceptable for for your vibe. Yeah, yeah, and not, not not necessary to to wear only gym clothes outside. So, <laughs> kind of yeah, wear proper clothes. Uh, so I uh, am kind of uh, I wanted to mention that. So for for months and months, uh, and this was years ago, th before we played Hooded Menace on the show, there was a fan. Every time we posted our Facebook playlist, and I can't name the guy. But every week, play Hooded Menace, play Hooded Menace. Why didn't you play Hooded Menace? Where's the Hooded Menace? And <laughs> to the point where we were like, oh, I guess we got to play Hooded Menace. And finally, we play Hooded Menace. And he's like, fucking finally, man. <laughs> so shout out to that guy. Yeah, shout out. Yeah, that's great. Great one. Your fans, man. Devoted. Yeah. So uh, I, I have a I have a uh, kind of a random question for you. We ask this of uh, of every musician we talk to. If you could pick a scar on your body and tell us the story of how you got that scar. Scar on my body. Um, mm, let me think. The one one that comes to my mind is uh, it's on my palm. Okay. Palm of my hand. It's a. Uh, I was a little boy back, uh, like, uh, must have been less than 10 years old. And my um, cousin cousin was looking after our, me and my brothers. And I was, I was um, fooling around with a knife, like, uh, trying to scare, scare the shit out of my cousin who was responsible for us and, like, wanted to, wanted to freak her out with, like, um, fake cutting myself mm -hmm. sort of thing like uh not actually cutting but doing it uh the 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 different direction so it, it sure. would look like look like bad but didn't harm you but uh, after after uh, like 10 minutes of trying to get my cousin to look at it uh, i already uh pushed uh the track on my palm with a knife so no. when i when i did the when i did the so-called fake slice it wasn't fake at all because it, it just went the track i was <laughs> i had been pushing for over 10 minutes so there's a it's yeah it's still there you were tr you were goofing and you just uh you did it too real man you were just yeah accidentally yeah got my yeah palm bleeding out so <laughs> too hardcore dude too hardcore <laughs> Well, uh, I want to talk to you about the record. So, uh, obviously, uh, like I said, the Tritonous Bell coming out August 27th. And uh, was this album, so, did you guys record this during the pandemic? Yeah, 
yeah, we recorded it um, last year, so it, it it coincided with the with the pandemic, but uh, it was just like coincidence, like because it it, it had been already been on the works for years, and it was kind of planned to be recorded that year, last year, like anyway. So. What what was the what was the was it uh, any different process for you guys as far as recording during a global pandemic? That must have been interesting. Uh, not a, not not actually because uh, okay yeah because uh, this band is uh, for example comparing to the other bands I I've used to be and I I work I've been working with uh, it's uh, it follows uh, its own routines and it's a. Uh, we we've been recording in different locations and uh and the, everything is already prepared like the pre-production wise all also like 100 percent when we enter the studio mm-hmm. and uh so it's um there's nothing like like we have to gather around like jamming and finding out what's going on because uh lost it the the main guy of the band the guitar mm-hmm. player who used to be the only guy uh, back in the days, with the when the when the first album came out, uh, he he writes all the songs, so and he he does all the production, pre-production. So it's a uh, it's uh, like a ready-made table. We okay. get in, we just we just do our, other persons. We do just do our parts when it comes to the, the studio stuff. And uh, for example, I did I did my vocals here in Helsinki, uh, Helsinki. Uh, which is like like I I did last time as well. The other guys uh, are living uh, different parts of Finland in in Joensu area. So I, I was I didn't even go there, or they didn't come here when we recorded the the vocals. So it was si- sort of isolated process anyway, and it it was like that with the yeah. previous album as well. Well, uh, the way you recorded this album, have you guys gotten together at all to to play the songs, or is that uh, yet to come? Uh, I, I, yeah, actually, I didn't. We didn't uh, gather as a whole band uh, a single time. Oh wow! Play, okay. So, yeah, I, I think the guys, uh, the the guys with the instruments, they did, they, mm-hmm. they did some some of them that like rehearsing. Over Joensu when they were preparing the the instruments to be recorded, but my I didn't I, I my first time with the vocals was actually recording it, and uh and after that oh, oh wait a second no problem dude <laughs> yeah I had an alarm to <laughs> remind me remind me of this interview so yeah <laughs> perfect yeah but uh. Yeah, I, actually, yeah, actually, the first time I I did the vocals with the with the other guys was when we um, like a uh, uh, couple of months ago when we uh, when we shot the the music video for mm. the track "Those Who Absorb Night." That was the first time I actually like was with the other all the other guys in the same room, like playing things. Since the since the 2018. Oh wow! Okay, so even before the pandemic and all of that stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because uh, we haven't been doing any gigs since mm-hmm. the the Kill Panda gig in uh, 2018. So I, I've seen the other guys. Yeah, like like one at a time sort of thing. No, actually, actually, I was actually like. We did a photo shoot before oh, okay. that. Okay, there you go. But, there you go. But but like it was still this year, so uh, so yeah, it's been a we we, we live uh, like the distance is quite long uh, w- with me uh, the other guys. So it's just like that. Yeah. So, uh, I, I I'm curious about. Uh what what you can tell us about the album man i know it's only a few weeks out and whatnot but there, there's some diehard hooded menace that fans that kind of want to he- hear some hints about the album or like what what you can tell us about it uh what can you what can you drop us uh some knowledge about the album man mm. 
Uh, I, I think the, the most obvious thing when people get to listen to the album is, uh, is uh, that it has some classic heavy metal elements more than, than we used to. Yeah, I was reading something about that, how there's a little bit of a merciful fate kind of influence and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lost, Lost has been like listening constantly, like the last few years, almost only the, the, the music from his childhood, like the 80s heavy metal, or, or, also the cheesy ones, not, not, the, not, not, not only the harder stuff, but also the very cheesy 80s heavy metal. And it's, uh, it's kind of a, you can kind of hear it uh, from the record and it's uh, it, and it, when it comes to that that kind of um, not up tempo but more mid tempo heavy metal riffs going on yeah uh, and mix, mix with the de- uh, the maybe more classic death doom elements it's a uh, it's a uh, kind of a natural and uh, it makes sense that the sound is also a bit different we wanted to have the production with a more uh, punch to it, sure. Instead of, instead of just like the the muddiness, the dirgy uh, kind of grimy sound, yeah. Yeah, we. So it's it's a kind of a in my in my point of view, it's a kind of a cool mix of uh, of the the classic hood and menace sound with the losses of like beautiful melodies and the crushing riffs, but also blended with the uh, with the with the heavy metal like riffing and st- stuff like that so it's a uh, yeah I, I think that's the, the most obvious thing about, about the new album that people might get like be be surprised even but i think so, it's cool yeah so what you're saying is it's going to be all falsetto high-pitched Judas Priest style vocals, right? You're just going to be scre- high pit. I'm just kidding, dude. I'm just. <laughs> yeah, actually, the funny thing that you point out, the Judas Priest, because uh, we did for the special edition CD, we did a we did a Wasp cover. Oh wow! Uh, Torture never stops. And, yeah. Uh, we were even we were we even demo did a demo um, of Judas Priest's Nightcrawler. Nice. By, like doing the Huda Minna style, but. It's it um, it, it appeared that it didn't fit as well as the the wasp cover okay. to, our, to our sound, mostly because of the the, the Halford's uh, vocal, uh, the, how 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 the whole songwriting is uh, is centered. Oh on yeah, the vocal, vocal harmonies of the Halford's voice. So it didn't make sense to do the de- like the death metal version of yeah. it. Like we. Yeah, couldn't do justice for the song in, in, in a way that I think the Wasp works. So, okay. yeah. But yeah, but yeah, the funny thing about the sound is that, uh, no, 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 not actually funny thing, but the, the cool thing, mm-hmm. in my perspective, uh, about the sound is that we had the Andy LaRogue, mm-hmm. yeah, King Diamond guitar, guitarist, uh, to do the mixing and, and the, the guitar recordings with us. So, so he knows that sound, dude. He knows. Yeah, it. he knows yep. the sound, and he he was a kind of a uh, yeah. He was the sound we were after. So that's it perfect. Was really, yeah, really cool to get him on board, and it was and it worked well. He was really down to earth guy to work with, and everything went really smoothly. So awesome. yeah. Well, you you were talking about your fellow uh, your bandmate who was listening to a lot of like classic heavy metal and whatnot to inspire the uh, the writing of this album. And I'm curious about what was kind of your uh, introduction to metal. What were some of your first favorite metal bands, and what got you into the heavier stuff? Um, I got into the heavier stuff uh, like a couple of times in my life. Uh, I think the, the the first introduction was was uh, when I was a little kid. My uh, my dad he he used to have that, he, or he had uh, plenty of uh, LPs of of the the classic heavy heavy rock, hard rock stuff. Yeah, like um, Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, mm-hmm. uh, Dio, something like that. Nice, and it, yeah, it, like like. 
if I have to like recall the the first like memories of actually digging really like really digging uh, heavy metal it was um, he had a VHS video of mm-hmm. uh, Dio, Dio's concert uh, he did uh, on the Last in Line tour. Yeah, uh, with a with a Vinnie Appice on on the pyramid doing the drum solos and stuff. So uh, that was kind of my first introduction to heavy metal and kind of a, a hit really hard for the for the guitar it was. But uh, but for the like the the more extreme metal, yeah, uh, it was just it was. I was like, uh, I must have been like more like 18 years old uh, i i used to listen to punk and hardcore punk stuff and got like and that was the uh my gateway to like for example thrash metal or death metal and mm-hmm. grindcore and stuff like that so uh, i used to yeah I, I i was very into hardcore punk and mm-hmm. and started to listen to something some like i i i think the first ones must have been like Napalm Death. Nice. Uh, like from the from the punk and grindcore perspective, mm-hmm. and some maybe some Slayer, early Sepultura, Sodom, like these classic thrash, dirty thrash bands. Yeah, and yeah, like Cannibal Corpse. Yeah. All those stuff. They were like the the first ones I got like got into, and and so it was after that it was just like going the the deep deeper into the underground music and stuff oh i'm familiar with that feeling dude so uh so we're you're wearing a barrett shirt right now uh i'm curious what was your first metal t-shirt you ever got my first metal t-shirt um that is hard one because um i didn't wear when i was a kid i i didn't wear band merchandise okay uh, oh no 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 maybe yeah i i had a kiss shirt nice when i, when I was a, like uh, like 10 years old cool but it's, it's, a, it's a questionable thing whether it's metal or not <laughs> but yeah in the same 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 category I, absolutely I, yeah I, yeah like yeah cool rock rock music but it's a uh, yeah when you're a little kid kiss is the most metal thing ever like that is yeah, so yeah. metal when you're a little kid, dude. Yeah, all the all the makeups and stuff like used to used to put on the Peter Chris makeup. Absolutely, nice. like on my on myself as a ten year old. Yeah. So uh, I, have, I have a question for anyone who wants to be a vocalist or is a vocalist, and they look up to Hood and Menace, and and they want to know, like, uh, you know, they're maybe getting into you know, the routine of, you know, trying to, you know, kind of strengthen their voice. Is there anything that you do uh, in preparation on tour to, to kind of strengthen your voice or is there a routine you have before shows or anything? Uh, not exactly. I, I think, I guess I should have, uh, but it's, I'm just too lazy. I <laughs> like with, with every, every other thing I do, I, I, I do in music. I'm too, I, I don't enjoy like, like practicing, like be an instrument or be a like vocal stuff. I I usually just do and learn by doing. And it's a uh, you yeah. Sometimes you like while learning you you do some mistakes and you 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 pay for, you pay the price like uh, losing your voice and stuff like that. But it's uh for me it's it's just it's just like finding the the way to use my voice that feels natural and it's uh and 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 gets me on a like doing it for a necessary time okay but it's uh yeah i i think probably the things is that i try not to shout out too loud after the shows in the in the for example back in the days when you were still actually hanging out in the bars yeah. after the shows with a, plenty of people and music loud. It's a, uh, I, I think that's the, the most toxic thing you can do for your voice, especially if you, you have to do the, the next day, 
like being on tour, tour or something like that. So, yeah, trying to shut up <laughs> after the show and let, like rest. Let other people do the talking. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm not that too good at it. I, I usually <laughs> fail. I usually fail with that. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I, I'm curious. I just have a couple more questions for you, man. And again, I'm talking, uh, we're talking about the new Hooded Menace record that's coming out August 27th. And, and um, I'm stoked to hear it. So you can pre-order it now through Season of Mist. Uh, I am curious, though, about um, now this is, uh, this is not trying to be any, any kind of like political question here. I don't want you to, to, to uh, you know, uh, you know, piss off any of your bands in, in Finland, but I am curious. We all know the big four of American thrash, right? Megadeth, Slayer, Anthrax, uh, and Metallica. What, how did I, how did I forget Metallica? Uh, what in your opinion is the big four of Finnish metal and your personal? Oh, no your favorites. Yeah, that is a tricky one. Um, I, I started with Beherit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're the, they, they are just geniuses. Um, um, and then I'd say Unholy. Okay. I was just listening to the second ring of power, like before we started the interview. Um, Yeah, it's it gets really hard to. I, I'm trying to look at my records record <laughs> shelf. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, because now now we're down to last two. Yep. So it's uh it it gets harder um, harder to pick. Um, Kind of a, it's it's funny that like, it's, uh, oh wait a sec, um, now I feel that I'm actually just like I'm thinking too much because I I can uh, like get a hold on anything, yeah. Sort of but yeah, Beherit and Unholy, it's a uh, it's a no brainer. They're definitely the starting point. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. That that's cool. I don't need to, you know. I, I and I did throw that on you. I did not prepare you for this interview. Yeah. There's no <laughs> pre-interview prep or anything. So just know that it, he loves Finnish metal. So that's all you need to know. Is he he obviously has a lot going through his head and he can't, uh, you know, whittle it down to just four. So just know that uh, when you're watching this interview. So. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, okay, man. Well, uh, one album that we wouldn't expect the guy, the singer of Hooded Menace to like. What is one album in your collection that is just like you love, but isn't exactly metal? Something that uh, people wouldn't expect for, for the guy from Hooded Menace to love. I go lots of like, like non-metal stuff in my record collection. Also like nothing to do with rock music mm -hmm. um let me think what is the most surprising one uh because there are lots of like um uh, like the old finnish music mm -hmm. like the uh the the kind of stuff like people in finland like 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 you say ordinary people is it like you, folk folk music kind of? Yeah, something like that. But they, I I don't think it, that's too like surprising one, like at least in Finnish perspective. Sure. So um, right now when I'm looking at the, the my record collection over there, it's I, I think Johanna Kurkela might be the one that even some Finnish people might be surprised with. Okay. She's a she's a vocalist of. A, like her own music, the solo stuff, it's like Finnish, sung in Finnish, really etheric. 
uh, female voice, and it's nothing to do with the metal or rock and roll, or uh, not even. It's not even like experimental music. It's just like uh, it used. To, it's it's kind of a popular music in a uh, in uh, some people. Some, uh, but yeah, she's the one that actually nowadays is married with Thomas Holopainen of Nightwish, and they do some oh. like pro projects together. She sang on the on the on, <laughs> on Thomas Holopainen's. Scrooge McDuck uh, <laughs> album and stuff. Now that that those those are actually my of, too much of my liking. I I I, I like her solo stuff better. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think that's uh, I, I that might be the the most surprising one. Right on, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to to uh, you know field these random questions from out of nowhere, and yeah. uh, it's been great chatting with you, man. So again, the album is coming out August twenty seventh on Seasons of Mist, uh, Season of Mist, uh, Hooded Menace, The Tritonus Bell. Been talking with Hari. Uh, any any final words, man, for for the metal shop or uh, the metal audience here in Seattle? Mm. Uh, I haven't. I don't have any prepared, but I have to say that my I've been to Seattle once when nice. we were touring in 2016 mm -hmm. uh, with Demilich and Vastum. Yes, I know that was a great one, and we my uh, the, the final show I did with them uh, was uh, in actually in Seattle at the at Highline Bar. Yeah, which is a which is a really cool place, and I I'd like to I like to send my my Hello to Dylan from Bellwich, who owns the place because he's a he's a great guy and he he like yeah I, I he, he just lots of love to Dylan. <laughs> Shout out to Dylan from Bellwich, man! Yeah. Awesome, Harry. Thank you so much for taking the time, man. Yeah, thank you very much. Have a good one, okay? Yeah, you too.